Welcome to a fresh episode of the latest tech news with Apple, OnePlus, Samsung in the news today, and the new PlayStation controller. It's looking good. We are apparently getting a smartphone with a main camera sensor that measures 192 megapixels, which is just absolutely insane. It shouldn't be allowed to be made, but it is apparently coming and we don't have to wait long, maybe even as soon as next month. This leak comes out of China and says that a phone with a Snapdragon 765G processor, which is a mid-range chipset, and coincidentally, the maximum amount of megapixels that that processor supports is 192. The leak also says it may be not what you're thinking. I'm thinking that this may be a prototype unit or a prototype sort of smartphone, maybe even a prototype camera sensor with this many pixels. It is very unlikely that it's gonna be an actual phone that's gonna to come to market. We know that Xiaomi are working on a 150 or 144 megapixel image sensor that will be made by Samsung for Xiaomi. That's not coming towards the end of the year though. We'll have to wait maybe the Mi Note 11, the CC10 as it's known, in China for that at the end of the year. Next month, 192 megapixels. Seems crazy. I guess we'll wait a couple of weeks and see what's gonna come. There is a new phone about to be launched called the Oppo Ace 2. This comes at, I think, the 13th of April in China, which is a couple of days before the launch of the One Plus series. The Reno Ace, the first version of this phone, was basically a One Plus 7T with a few changes. So the Ace 2, I guess is going to be a OnePlus 8 with a few changes. This phone looks to be an absolute specs beast though. It's got the Snapdragon 865. It has 65 watt fast charging and also 40 watt wireless charging, which is amongst the quickest wireless charging we get right now. The original version of the phone was called the Reno Ace, but this is called the Ace 2. They dropped the Reno branding. Not sure why, there are about a billion Reno phones last year. I guess they're trying to differentiate things this time around. This type of phone in China they call Gao Xingnang, which means function, very high functions, but they usually just forget about the camera, which is also the case in this phone. It's got last year's camera components, but the screen, 90 Hertz AMOLED, and the best processor and the best battery and the best charging you can pretty much get in a smartphone. Really interesting device. It also should be coming at a decent price, maybe five or $600 for basically a flagship phone without the camera stuff you get in other phones that focus on that stuff. It's basically gonna come as the OnePlus 8. Maybe Realme will make a similar phone to this and release it in different markets, depending where you are in the world. Sony have given us an official look of what the PlayStation 5 controller will look like, and I think it looks really cool. I love this new white color scheme. I think it looks really futuristic. We don't know what the PlayStation 5 is gonna look like. Well, officially anyway, there's been plenty of leaks on that one, but apparently this new controller has a ton of upgrades on the outside and the inside. It's called a Dual Sense controller, so no more Dual Shock branding. They've changed things. Apparently the haptics are getting much improved over last time. The new haptic feedback engine will replace the old rumble technology as they called it. So some more clicky haptics I would hope for. Also the triggers apparently have adaptive strength and resistance. So depending on what game you're playing, you will actually uh, have more or less resistance on those triggers, which I think is a pretty cool move. It will have an integrated mic as well, a USB-C port, definitely a good thing. And the PlayStation logo in the middle, actually is a PlayStation logo cutout now rather than the logo stuck onto a button. As for the price of these to be sold separately, we don't know yet. They will obviously come with the PlayStation 5, but buying them separately, maybe $60, $100, but definitely excited for the PS5. The most powerful smartphones on earth are in this list. The Antutu Benchmark app and company have compiled the top 10 most powerful smartphones in the whole world. As of March, this was from the 1st of March to the 31st of March, taken over a thousand different test results and averaged out. So the scores you're getting are not just from one result. Very unsurprisingly, the Galaxy S20 phones take up most of the list. And yeah, unsurprisingly, the Snapdragon variants are beating out the Exynos variants. A lot of people unhappy this year, just the gulf between the Exynos and the Snapdragon chipsets. The Snapdragon variants getting about 560,000 for the score and the Exynos variants of the same phone getting about 520,000, which is about an 8% difference. It's pretty big, 
But remember, AND22 tests a lot of other things, not just the processor. Apparently, in different tests, the Exynos and the Snapdragon have about a 20% difference, which is not insignificant considering this is apparently the same phone from Samsung. The rest of the phones making up the list are actually just some 4G phones that we got last year, the ROG Phone 2, the Realme, and also some OnePlus phones in there. Yeah, they are powerful phones, a couple of them using the 855 Plus, which was an overclocked version, showing that actually you can still get really good value phones if you just look to six months before now. They also gave us a list of mid-range phones, which is made up of mostly Snapdragon 730G phones and the Redmi Note 8 Pro leading the list, which is a really cheap phone, so well done for that one. I guess the Snapdragon 765G, which is the new chipset from Snapdragon, hasn't been released worldwide in many phones yet and so also doesn't make the list. Have to wait a few months for that to come into some worldwide phones. OnePlus took the lid off their extremely strange charging accessory that's going with the OnePlus 8 Pro. So we now know that we are getting 30 watt fast charging on the wireless side for the OnePlus 8 Pro to go with apparently 30 watt wired charging, but only if you use this accessory. OnePlus put out a blog post saying that they've had a lot of trouble with wireless charging technologies getting it up to the standard that they wanted. And the only way to do it in phones as fast as this is to give us their own accessory, which apparently has a fan inside to keep everything cool so that they can charge at a higher rate. According to other leaks, this charging accessory will cost about 70 euros, which is I guess 70, 80 US dollars. It's not cheap, but it's the only way to get fast wireless charging on the OnePlus 8 Pro. If you wanna use a Qi wireless charger, then the rate will go down to five watts. That's the maximum they support with the Qi standard, even though there are faster Qi wireless chargers, you'll only get five watt on that standard in the OnePlus 8 Pro. But hey, it's nice to know that wireless charging is on the OnePlus 8 Pro at least, apparently not on the OnePlus 8. Using their charger and the OnePlus 8 Pro, you can apparently go from naught to 50% in 30 minutes, which is a pretty good time, and then up to 100% in 80 minutes, or you can just plug it into the wall and get a similar rate for charging as the wired and wireless in the phone will be the same. The first bit of Samsung news is that apparently the S20 Ultra, that is the phone that a lot of people were not that pleased with when they first got it, including myself, is without a doubt the most popular model in the S20 lineup, which goes against a lot of what we're seeing in other lineups where the non-pro models, especially in the Apple lineup of phones, actually the non-pro model sells more. But it turns out when it comes to Samsung, the more expensive, the better. $1,400 for that phone and it's selling more than the other two. This is thanks to supply chain information that says that the ultra wide camera used in the S20 Ultra and also the 40 megapixel selfie camera are actually being bumped up in terms of their orders. Samsung need more of them and they're selling more of the Ultra than the other two phones. And I must admit, since the updates have come, it is a completely different phone, a much, much better phone than it first came. It's a really, really good phone. We also got news about a patent that Samsung had filed in China last year of a quad curved display smartphone. This looks really cool. According to Ice Universe in a post a while back, he said that Samsung were considering this for their flagship phones, but they decided against it because the, the technology wasn't quite right to get it into phones. Thanks to Let's Go Digital though, we can see Samsung's patent. It could be coming to phones in the future if Samsung can get their technology right. And also, of course, there's no room whatsoever for a front camera there. That could be an under screen camera. If the technology matures in time, we could get both of these technologies together. Also more news from Sam Mobile suggests that the Galaxy Fold 2, which should be coming sometime this year, may get a cheaper option with a lower gigabyte RAM storage option of 256 gigabytes. That is down from the Galaxy Fold at 512 gigabytes, showing that Samsung are trying to make some cheaper options with their foldable devices, and that means bringing the price down to normal flagship levels, which should help them sell way more phones. We've already seen some initial leaks about the Galaxy Fold 2, possibly using a V cutout for the front camera on the outside. And the big one definitely is that it could be supporting an S Pen this time around, which is just a no-brainer for the device. Of course, a Note-style device, a big tablet-style device when you fold it out, it needs a pen. Samsung have the pen, so that just makes perfect sense. Lots of iPhone 12 leaks are starting to appear. Right now is the time that Apple actually decide on what the final device will be like. They will decide on the final designs before it all goes into production. 
And we have some leaks of apparently the iPhone 12 Pro Max, or at least the more expensive versions, getting a smaller notch and also a quad camera setup. So these were leaked online and there's a lot of questions saying, are they real, are they fake? Apparently these are glyphs that are found in an internal build of iPad OS. So these could be just drawings of what they think an iPhone 12 may look like. We can actually see really clearly that the quad camera on the back has a LiDAR sensor similar to the iPad Pro that was just released. Also on the front, it looks like the notch is smaller or at least narrower, not as wide. It looks in height to be about the same, but definitely a narrower bezel on the top there. And yeah, I actually think it makes perfect sense. Even Ming-Chi Kuo, who gets most things right with Apple, is saying that at least one of the upper end models, so either the Pro or the iPhone 12 Pro Max, We'll be getting a smaller front camera, which means a smaller bezel, maybe not coming to all the phones. It seems very, very probable that a smaller notch and an addition of a LiDAR sensor is coming. These are apparently not fake, but also maybe not what the final designs will be like. So we have to take it as every leak with a pinch of salt. According to John Prosser of Front Page Tech, he thinks that Apple are going to completely kill the Beats brand completely kill them off, not sell any more Beats headphones, but move a lot of those products over into Apple branded products with the Apple logo and the Air Pods or Air logo. Although it should be said that 9to5Mac think that this isn't happening at all and that Apple are gonna keep the Beats brand. There's definitely a lot of money to be made in the Beats brand, but for sure, look out for some new earphones from Apple this year. It looks like some Apple branded over ear headphones could be coming at the developer conference very soon. And then the AirPods X, which they may be called the running earphones, may be coming towards the end of the year. So let's look out for what Apple is gonna give us.